Welcome to ABUSD Science. I'm Dr. Gillette, and today's story is entitled Whoosh. Have you ever played with a super soaker? Maybe your parents in the old days had to play with tiny little squirt guns. But that all changed in the 90s. What happened? Lonnie Johnson happened. Lonnie Johnson is an inventor that started his early career with building instruments for NASA and JPL. Life wasn't always easy for Lonnie, but through it all he persevered and made his dreams come true. As you listen to the story, pay attention to the challenges that Lonnie faced. After the story, stay tuned for an activity with rockets. Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson Super Soaking Stream of Inventions by Chris Barton, illustrated by Don Tate. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson, the challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits. Bamboo shooters, rubber band guns, erector set, go-kart engine, bolts and screws and other spare parts his dad let him bring in from the shed, and various other things he hauled back from the junkyard. Lonnie loved building and creating. Ideas for inventions just kept on flowing. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them, and he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam that said that he would not make a very good one. His dreams had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew that whoever graded his test hadn't met Linux. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He made it out of scrap metal and named it Linux. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux, and as a bonus, the reels looked like eyes. Lonnie wanted to enter his creation in the science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work. Without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science first came and went. Lonnie missed one and then another until he got an idea. Now Lonnie may or may not have asked before he borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie. But it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux to a 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama, where only five years earlier, African-American students hadn't even been allowed. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming, now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. Soon, Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as a guy who built his own booming sound system out of a cast-off electronics. He even had lights that flashed in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation. And that took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. When NASA was sending an orbiter and a probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a consistent supply of power to the orbit's computer memory. The engineer who had figured out how to do it was Lonnie. His challenge was able to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential function going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious, but Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Proportion Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Lonnie convinced them it would. He was right. As it photographed Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at risk in a power failure if not for Lonnie. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. The flowing, whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or up late tinkering with his own inventions, 
in finally his own workshop. Lonnie knew the world's million of refrigerators and air conditioners needed new cooling system, one that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He used an idea for his water and an air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and a nozzle connecting them to the bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then whoosh. The stream that blasted across the bathroom was so powerful, it created a curtain swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he got had the, to glue the parts together in a prototype, an early version with room for improvement. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange-looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work, a man asked. Sure, Lonnie said. Want to see? Lonnie worked the pump, which squeezed into the air into the chamber. When he pulled the trigger, the air escaped, forcing water out with a whoosh. For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't be just one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed help making more, so he went to toy company after toy company after toy company. Yes. The words no flowered again and again, but finally one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had another project, a water-propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith, quit his day job, and devoted himself to a full-time inventing. But soon after each plan fell apart, even the one of the water gun, the things sometimes happen. But when they happen, one after another, to the same person, well, that sometimes pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job. He didn't have any money he had been counting on. He and his family had to move out of their home into a little apartment. He was angry and scared. But Lonnie had dealt with challenges all his life. He knew a lot about solving problems, and he still believed in inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was interested in seeing the water gun in if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made it a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, and pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high, and whoosh. Kids everywhere agreed with the wow. Lonnie's water gun, called the Super Soaker, became a smash hit. In no time, there were super soakers in the backyards, on beaches, in parks, and playgrounds. Each sale of a super soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. So what did Lonnie do? He got a bigger workshop, which is where you'll find him today, because facing challenges, solving problems, and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do, and his ideas just kept on flowing. For today's activity, we're going to build a straw rocket. You'll want to start out with a sheet of paper, a straw, a pencil, scissors, and some tape. Now in the description, I'll link uh, a template you can use to build these rockets, but really you don't need a template. So take a sheet of paper, and we'll need some squares or rectangles. So I'll fold it in half this way, and fold it in half this way. And if you really just tear on the seams, you'll get the right size paper for the rocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the pencil and we're going to roll it around the pencil. And then take tape and you want to tape the seam shut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the tube off and I'm going to pinch one end down and I'm going to turn that into the nose cone, like so. 
Now a rocket needs fins, so I'm going to take some paper and I'm going to cut some triangles. Nothing fancy. So here I've got two triangles, and I'm going to tape these onto the rocket opposite of the piece I just, the, the nose cone that I just folded down. One fin on there, I think I'll do two fins. Try with different fins, maybe three, maybe four, see what works best. And now that I've got these two fins, I can put it back on my straw. And slide the straw through the body. And then give it a puff and shoot it off. Now, we want to measure how far the rocket goes. So either on your, your floor or uh, maybe with some tape, mark out a starting point, and then maybe with a tape measure, line up uh, how far uh, the rocket has traveled. Now it's your turn. Engineer a different kind of rocket. Make it go further, faster. Uh, maybe add more fins. Make the rocket shorter, taller. Use a different size straw. Maybe a different size nose cone. Try a real advanced topic. Add a little bit of weight to the very tip of the, the nose cone and see how it flies. Now that you've a chance to launch the rockets, we'd love to see what you built. Make sure to post pictures with the hashtag AVUSD Storytime Science to your favorite social media. Can't wait to see them. Thanks.